Hope everyone got a bulletin. There are some fill in the blanks. And I don't have a final slide that gives you the correct answers, so consider an adventure it an adventure you have to figure out what to put in there. The title of my message is When Christ is Your Treasure. It could have been If Christ is Your Treasure. I'm assuming that those who are gathered on the Lord's day for the Lord's sake, the Lord's glory, are in agreement that Christ is valuable. Is he your utmost treasure? Let me ask you this question. You've probably been asked at least a dozen times. If you were to win the lottery, what would you do? How would your life be changed? And I think Andy mentioned the last time that the, often it's the case that people that win the lottery... They, they escalate into uh, the high times, high living, and then they descend rapidly into depression, and, and uh, they lose their wealth very quickly and are miserable in life. How can that be with this great blessing? I personally only am aware of one person, or one family that won the lottery. Down in California, California, there was a secretary, made a little bit more than the minimum wage, lived, lived a humble life, did not know this uh, woman personally. But I did see them around town. It was interesting that after they won, someone could have asked them this question. What would you do if you won the lottery and how would your life change? Well, they did. And sure enough, soon a Jaguar was the car. And a gated community, half a million, one million dollar home, they changed suddenly. And since it's not happened to me, I don't know what I would do. But I'm concerned about what I would do. Are you I mean, it kind of makes me nervous. I don't know that I could be trusted with riches because I might squander them. I might do something foolish, too. I mean, I go to Harbor Freight, and I overpurchase, and then I look at the coupons later. Oh, crud, if I just waited, I could have got 20% off on everything I bought. And so managing wealth becomes its own preoccupation. So uh, today, I want to suggest to you right off that you're safe when Christ is your treasure, when you win salvation. And it's not by something, it, it's, uh, I don't want to confuse us, the, the message here is Paul teaching about teaching to the rich. Salvation is by grace through faith. It's not something you buy a ticket and you're checked out by lottery, but you are elected for it. And when Christ is your treasure, you have certainty and you have great joy and you have delight. And you can't lose it and it doesn't escalate and then tank, although the Christian life does have its up and downs. In your bulletin, there are fill-in-the-blanks. There are three points. It's interesting. You're going to find that Paul preached with these three points later on. And if you would open your Bibles now to 1 Timothy, near the very end of this epistle, we're in the final chapter, and I'm going to cover only three verses. My assignment has been to cover 17, 18, and 19. Verse 17. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. So now Paul is addressing the rich in the Ephesian church. He's not addressing those who desire to be rich, because he's already talked about that earlier in the chapter and given warnings about those who unduly desire to be rich. He's talking to those who might happen to be rich. I will cover some of the hazards again. I'll review the hazards of pursuing wealth, but what, what if you gain it honestly? You just happen to be rich, and there are many... Not in this congregation, to my knowledge, but there are many who are rich and godly, and we want to look at that, and Paul would be speaking to them. I do want to make sure that I cover the bases so that if you don't consider yourself rich, I don't want you to think that this passage is not written for you, because I'm going to suggest that you are rich. If you're a Christian, you have vast assets and resources, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the kingdom, you are rich. So I'm going to try to convince you that this is speaking to you. As for the rich in this present age, well, Paul is writing, he's already made a distinction between we've got the present age 
And then there are other ages. He's not writing to the people who are rich in the past because they can't change their behavior. He's writing to people who are rich in the present age, and that means that he's going to address also a future age that is important. And there can be riches in that age as well. Hope you like the picture. Woohoo! I'm rich, I tell you, I'm rich. How does it feel to be rich? Isn't it interesting? Sometimes children don't have the perspective of what riches can do, what they can buy. Mom and dad provide everything. And so if you got a $20 bill, man, what could I do with that? I mean, you don't even know. And I want you to have a sense of the wonder of what riches and wealth can do if properly required. Well, rich is having a great deal of money or assets. You are wealthy. You don't have to worry because it's not like, gosh, I'd like to buy something. I'm hungry. I'd like some food. I can't afford it. I'm worried. What am I? I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. What am I going to do? When you have money, it's very easy to just lay it down and walk away. Art and I go out on a weekly date, and often we, and it's a, it's a very expensive, I, I don't know if I should share this. It's a bit indulgent, but the Subway <laughs> dinner with a two ninety nine sandwich, six inch sandwich, and then we go shopping at grocery outlet usually afterwards or Winco, and we're full. I like the Subway sandwiches, and we we come home with some of our favorite food week after week with no worries. Now I've been in the Philippines on small islands and in Russia and Albania, where the supermarkets aren't as prevalent. And I still marvel at what I'm able to just go select and bring home. And we find ourselves thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the prosperity that we enjoy. Driving in air conditioning and hauling it home and putting it in a refrigerator. We feel rich. We feel like these passages are directed at us. Maybe you do as well. Rich is having a great deal of money or assets and being wealthy. Now... As you know, I taught for 30 years, and I'm now in retirement. I've not yet received my first pension, but what a strange feeling it is to not work and get paid. Very strange. And yet, that, I consider myself quite wealthy to have that available to me. Here's a man who would like to be rich in honor of those people who have been laboring so long and hard for this upcoming show. And he says this, dear God, you made many, many people poor, poor people. I realize, of course, but that's no shame. It's no shame to be poor, but it's no great honor either. So what would have to be so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, daedle, deedle, daedle, 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 deedle, deedle, dum, all day long I'd biddy, biddy, bum, if I were a wealthy man. And then... I wouldn't have to work hard. And it goes on and on. Pretty interesting lyrics. I had to check these out. That was tricky for me. The daedle, deedle, daedle, 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 deedle, deedle. What does a rich man do if he's not worrying about maintaining and managing his wealth? Well, Reb Tevye, he just talks about how he can show his wealth and be conspicuous. But then he says the best treasure of all would be to go to the synagogue and look at the scriptures and talk with the learned men. And so riches oftentimes buy you freedom. Leisure, perhaps, but the ability to do what you want. It's pretty amazing. And I wouldn't have to work hard. What about those who stop working? Well, Paul has got some advice for you that it's not simply to be a time to check out and coast on your money, but that your resources are for the good of the kingdom. And I hope to make that case. Thank you, Reb Tevye. Let's look at what it really means to be rich. So when I think about rich, rather than you check out, let's review who the rich are. Okay? I don't know if any of these men are Christian. I don't think so. So they can't attribute their wealth to the blessing of God unless they're somehow accessing common grace, even if they know what that that is. So the richest Americans in our present age in 2017, to review, the five richest Americans... Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, and Larry Ellison. And what's interesting, and this is fun for me, when I do a a message like this, I typically research the topic because I don't normally think about this stuff and don't manage my own financial affairs. Arden's the one that pretty much pays the bills. I just kind of make the money, and and then uh, she manages it. So it's fascinating to me 
the, uh, we have the green marker there, the 2017 gain, and then the total net worth. So look at the gains alone. 